Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is VTech Guy. As always, I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Chris Mullins. How are you doing, sir? Pretty good about yourself today. Pretty great. You want to introduce our uh, our guest for today? Okay, ladies and gentlemen. This guy is actually a trainer for one of our friends, and we're so glad to have him here today. It's a, it's it's always great to get the input of a trainer as it pertains to these little podcasts here, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce you to Slick Wagner Brown. What's up, guys? What's How's up? It going, man? I'm good, man. Thank you guys for having me. What's going on? No oh, problem. Thanks, thanks for much, having man. us. You know? Thanks for having us. Yeah, that's Yeah, that's bit... like, thanks, thanks for thank having you, for... you. Thanks for giving us this time. <laughs> you got it, man. No problem. So you uh you help out one of our buddies to uh, hopefully fulfill his dream of being a professional wrestler. His name is uh, Lenny. Um, yeah. Not to break kayfabe because he hates mm-hmm. it every time to do that, but you know he's known as El Jabroni. Right. So. Well, you got you got to remind him that we have a thing called the internet now. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you for dealing with Lenny and this El Jabroni character, by the way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So what is it? Uh, what has it been like? You know, being a trainer. You know, transitioning from. You know, because I I definitely imagine coming from being you know full time active competitor to you know really giving back to the industry has to you know change your mindset on how you gotta approach things. Right. Yeah. Well, I still I still do both. It's kind of like mm-hmm. in the earlier years where I was a trainer at Kowalski's, I would do both. So I was wrestling and training. But now the only difference is, you know, the test of strength deal is is mine. So, you know, or ours, it's like our deal. So, like, I do everything from, you know, the marketing and the training and just, you know, getting building the brand, basically. We're all doing that together as a team, so. Well, that's, that's a good concept. We're working together because, obviously, one person can't do everything by themselves. Even right, in, even, exactly. in the, even in the big Even in the big times, not one person can do it by themselves. No, it's, t- it's definitely a team effort, man. That's why, you know, I, I, I like when it comes to like politics and stuff. I hate when one party says that, you know, I, I, I did this, I mm-hmm. did that. No, that's not true because you're selling a false story to people, and no, no one man does does anything. Somebody, somebody helps you along the way to make it possible. Oh yeah, always. There's always that person for you. Yeah. So who was your real big influence as it pertains to the professional wrestling game? Would you say Killer Kowalski? Uh, he was definitely, like, you know, my mentor, and he definitely made it possible for me to fulfill my dream or, you know, uh, of being a pro wrestler. So that was really cool. I mean, without him, you know, I don't know. I don't know if uh, – because the first time I saw wrestling was 10 years old. And then when I really thought about doing it, like – you know, for real, was like as a teenager in high school, and then after I graduated high school, I was, you know, a buddy of mine found Kowalski School, and you know, the rest is history. So, um, Kowalski is definitely important, important to me, and definitely a mentor, and definitely someone that made it possible for me to live my dream. Well, he's also definitely just a bi- uh, in general big name in the wrestling business. With yeah. Some of the names that he's had that he's had run through his school. And yeah, through he's his def- training. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the guys and girls that he's trained uh, did, you know, had a big impact on the wrestling business. I mean, yeah, one, and there's one, actually a couple of big the, names that you got to your own name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, one Including, of Including uh, Eddie Edwards. Eddie Edwards, yeah. Nikki yeah, Rocks. Yeah, uh, Nikki Rocks. Sumi Sakai. Yeah, Sumi Sakai. Yeah, uh, there was another, uh, Tony Delfonso, D.C. Dillinger. You know, there's a lot, a lot of guys yeah. that I helped that I helped fulfill their dream. Yeah, exactly, and it's, and it's always good to give back because you people gave to you, guys like Kowalski gave to you, and now you're giving back to these to this next generation. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly, and I, I think I think it's important, you know. I think it's important. Uh, wrestling to me is not just, you know, I, I was never a full contract WWE guy, so I never, you know, made a made a a lot of money wrestling, um, but um, I made an impact, and I was able to travel the world and. You know, now I have an opportunity with, with the Test of Strength Wrestling Dojo to um, to give back, give people an opportunity to live their dream, and hopefully be more successful than I was. That's what um. This is one thing I, I did want to ask you, just because we've kind of run into this with a lot of our uh, previous interviews. Uh, you've have you ever uh, had the opportunity? I believe you have, because I believe 
uh, unless because we, we we never knew found out for sure, but we at least definitely think we saw you on pay per view a few months the ago. Hell in a Cell 2016, yeah. I believe, and uh, yeah, that yeah. was pretty big. Back. That was the in first Boston, women's yeah. main event. It was, yeah, it was a histo- yeah. historical moment. So that that's that why I, I saw it. and I was like, I think that's slick. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're yeah. like, it wasn't. We we had to go back and watch it. And we thought it was you. Yeah, it was. That was me, man. Um, Good deal. Big ups to Sasha Bank for making that possible, you know? Good deal. So, definitely. Is, was that your first um, appearance on WWE television? No, but it was my first appearance on WWE pay-per-view. Well, that's always a big milestone, then. Yeah, man. yeah. For sure. Actually, the funny part is um, one of your trainees actually – because at least from what we've get gathered from talking with Lenny and whatnot, one of your trainees was actually mentioned in our last interview with Man Scout Jake Manning. Who's that? Who, uh, who's the trainee? Uh, Wrecking Ball Ligurski. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wrecking Ball is, uh, he's joined us for a couple of sessions. I mean, he originally uh, trained with, with another dojo in uh, I was Connecticut. Say, well, but... yeah, he, he got mentioned, because I know Lenny's met, Lenny mentioned him a couple of times. Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's popped in from time to time to work out with us, yeah good dude well that's always a good deal to get those bigger names in there yeah yeah absolutely, absolutely. definitely helps I mean, get those guys that feel and it it honestly just helps helps the morale of all the trainees so yeah those, it's always it's always good when it's like, almost like a whoa this is awesome yeah it's always good when a, when a guy that's doing doing things stops in because you know it gives that feel of well, they get to learn from 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 that that person. From a guy who's also. doing the big stuff, so mm-hmm. who better to, who better to get little tips and tricks from? Yeah, and, and it's also like uh, you never know, you know, who's gonna pop in, kind of thing. Exactly, surpri- yeah, that's always the best aspect. part. It's <laughs> especially if they surprise you yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the guys always they always reach out to me and let me know that they're coming coming through. So I, I pretty much know who's who's gonna be in there, who's not. Yeah. Well, that's always good then, because you don't want them to be like, "Oh, whoa," <laughs> even <laughs> even throws you off. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, we have a we have a very, uh, you know, we're we're open to people who are, you know, brand new who are already been in the game, already doing things that just want to play to train or just want to want to better themselves. Oh yeah, for sure, most definitely. So tell us a bit about your. Uh your exercises a bit about you know the training and stuff like that when it comes to you know well i mean uh my my big thing is just making sure all the guys that that train with us have have a strong foundation because you know i believe that that's the most important thing i mean when when you go to to uh work for wwe tna or ring of honor any of those places they're not they're not too you know especially WWE. they're not too concerned about all the fancy stuff they just want to know you have a strong base because they know that if you have a strong base, they can build on that. Mm-hmm. So, like, I always try to stress to the guys that, you know, without a strong base, the house falls. So it doesn't matter how pretty your house is, whatever you build. If it doesn't have a base, it falls. So it's very important to have a strong base. Because the guys who are out there, and they may have, like, you know, fancy moves that they do. But if you can't uh, perform the basics at the end of the day, I mean, you don't last that long. That's what WWE can sprinkle all the diamonds on you as long as yeah. you've got that base. Right, you need that base because you're not gonna be working with a guy that just flies all the time. You're not gonna be working with a guy that just that just like they know, can do that anything. Wrestles, yeah. You need mm-hmm. to be somebody that can do it all because if you can't do it all, then you're limited. You're limited. So you have to be. You don't. A good, you don't. Good you don't want to paint yourself in a corner. Right. You can't just be someone that works with guys that fly, and you can't work with the old school guys, or you can't work with the hardcore guys, or you can't work with the technical guys. You have to be able to do everything. For sure. What would you say is the most uh, rewarding thing about you know training all these guys, aside from you know probably seeing them you know get to those big leagues, especially Eddie Edwards? Like, what were yeah. your thoughts? You know, seeing him get the opportunity to be you know Impact Champion and you know all these accolades. No, he's he's doing amazing, man. He's he's all over the world. He's uh, creating opportunities not just for himself but for other people. And he's 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 doing his thing, man. He's uh, he worked hard. He deserves the opportunities that he gets. And uh, you know, I, I I knew that he would he would do big things because he, he always had the work ethic. He always had a strong work ethic. Uh, he was always at at practice no matter what. He uh, he was always willing to jump in the car and take take road trips even though he wasn't booked. So those are the things that 
that you got to do. You know what I mean? You got to be willing to step out of your comfort zone, and he always did that. So I knew that you can teach the skills, but you can't teach work ethic. No, you can't. I mean, you either have it or you don't. But I, you know, I I believe that you can improve on it. It's not. Yeah, it's just not something that if you don't have it, it's not something that someone can give you. No, but I want it. Yeah, you gotta want it, but I think you can improve on it. Like those are things that you can improve on. You know? Oh yeah, you can definitely mm-hmm. like, because especially being in a, being in certain situations, obviously, like obviously you were very um, supportive and very motivational to him. Right, right. So like obviously, it definitely drove him when you're mo- when you when he's motivated. Yeah, because he he came. I mean, New England when I was coming up was a was a, a type of thing where guys from that area would just stay in that area. So I was like one of the first guys to really break out of that area and go other places. And, you know, he, he saw oh, that and noticed the importance of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what you're seeing more and more of is now like, like I know what you're saying about the whole, because everyone used to just kind of stay in their place. Right, right. They used to just I stay mean, there. There was, no, there was no traveling from state to state. There was no cross-country traveling. No, because I, when I started, New England was, was pretty hot. New England wrestling was pretty hot. So I, I used to run into guys, a lot of guys that came from, like, you know, New York State or, like, Jersey or PA, and they would come and work for uh, Tony Rumble at the time. So, like, you know, traveling wasn't foreign to me because I saw those guys were doing it. So, And then, like, you know, when I was a little more experienced, a little more seasoned, like four or five years in, I decided I wanted to travel. And at the time, like the New York tri-state area, New York, uh, New Jersey, and PA was was the hotbed of pro wrestling at that time. So, you know, I would constantly be out that way and and beyond. That's what I'm definitely seeing because that's actually another thing about all our interviews is a lot of those guys. We I think honestly, at least two or it's been two or three of our interviews so far in the New Jersey area. Yeah. So it's still it's still obviously mm-hmm. a pretty big hotbed. Followed by man scout Jake Manning. Yeah. yeah and. It, uh, but I feel like New England is like kind of like the the premier uh, scene I, again. You know what I mean? Yeah. With with uh, you know stuff in in Maine like uh, Limitless Wrestling in Maine and uh, you know all the different companies like Big Time Wrestling and NECW and um, you know. You got the Monster Wrestling Factory. New- yeah, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of, lot of good companies out there. A lot, a lot of companies making. And there are a lot of companies just getting exposure, which is good to have. Yeah, That's I mean, the with, big with, thing is these indie companies are getting a lot of exposure because these guys are getting chances in the bigger companies, and then they're like, "Oh, where'd this guy come from? Hey, I'm gonna check out the rest of these guys here." That's true, and the beauty the beauty of wrestling today is the internet, man. I mean, when I first started out, it was pretty pretty new, but now it's like it's full full. Well, now you now you get the full, full like obviously like you see on tw- you have Twitter where you can see any time there's a big show co- indie show coming. Right, 24-7, 365, man. And, That's know, the can... best part about Twitter is I literally, on Twitter, I just follow like everything, and I'm just like, okay, you know what? There's an indie show in that area. I think I'm going to go up and travel up to it. I'm from the Ohio area. There's exactly. a pretty mountain this whole area. And you get to know the guys from from social media and just YouTube and everything else. You oh can yeah, that's see. what it is. Like even even through like this kind of stuff, it's awesome. Like yeah. that's how we reach out to all these mm-hmm. people. Yeah, and. and people have access to it all over the world i mean it's not just in your region or it in definitely your state. has helped yeah. the growth of indie wrestling social media absolutely is. absolutely people are seeing talents that you know i mean before when i was a kid i thought all the best guys were in wwe yeah and, now you're seeing you know, that that might not be the case sometimes exactly there's so many talented dudes out there that are not there's so many WWE. different flavors of competitor out there yeah people people originally thought that you know, if you weren't in WWE, you weren't any good. Now they can see for themselves. That's what, and it's definitely like, because I'm, I'm someone who, I always kind of like the indie scene, but now it's like almost like a, one of those, whoa, there's so many great talents out there. Yeah. There's so many great things out there that can, that are coming up in the world. Like, we just had, like, we just interviewed with um, Martin Casales, uh, Lucha Underground. That's another, yeah, Marty the Moth Martinez, Lucha Underground. That's yeah. another big th- thing that's really revolutionized in the game. All these smaller yeah. companies are really changing the game one by one, and it's make in turn it's making these bigger companies like the WWE have to change their approach. Exactly, because I mean they want to they want to remain at the top of the game. So whereas they weren't, then Vince wasn't really one to and not saying anything bad about him. He wasn't one to really want to go after a lot of those indie names. He liked nah, to really well, deal you with know. his own guys. 
Yeah, WWE they 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 like certain kind of wrestlers. That, you know, uh, they're they're being more open minded now, which is good. Yeah, which is awesome it's, because it's it's giving these guys a chance at something that didn't seem possible probably for them ten years ago. Right. But at the same time, like, it's good that these guys are getting opportunities, but, you know, they still favor a certain kind of wrestler. Yeah, it's, it's, they favor entertainer. Yeah. I always say it's it's always entertainer over professional wrestler. Yeah, pretty much. They want much, the guy that can gotta... sell for them. They want the guy that can cut the promo. They yeah. don't, like, they, because they can always fix the wrestling aspect of everything. But you gotta have personality. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I feel, I feel, I mean... That's an old, old approach, man. You know, it's like you can't really fix the wrestling. I mean, if the wrestling is bad, it's bad. At the end of the, at the end of the day, you have to wrestle, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> yes, what we do is entertainment, but no matter how many promos you cut, the promos are good because you need to cut promos to get people on the seats. But no matter what we do in this professional wrestling business, at the end of the day, you have to get in between those ropes and you have to wrestle. So <laughs> you, there's no substitute for it. You know, I mean, he he's bringing in a lot of good guys who are in between who are good in between the ropes now, and I, I feel like you know some people in in leadership positions are finally starting to realize that. But you know, at the end of the day, the bell has to ring, and you have to so. I mean, no matter what we do before that, it ends with in the ring. We're hitting. We're, we're definitely hitting a boom period. Yeah. Which is yeah, awesome I mean, to see because obviously, like I. Dom's a little bit younger, but I grew up in the Attitude Era where everything was great on professional wrestling wise. Yeah, everything, yeah, everything mean, was at the top of its game. Like everything, it was almost it was nuts to tune in every week. Attitude, attitude wise, that era was was great. I mean, uh, as far as characters and and promos and storylines, but the guys today. Are, you know, way better. They're athletes. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the, they're. They're revolutionizing the game today. Yeah, but we're missing those larger-than-life personalities, and yeah, we don't you know, see as many uh, of those personalities that are just like whoa. Yeah, I mean, one of the all you get a few of them here and there, like the, like I, I'm 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 a big fan of the Bray Wyatt character. Yeah, I, I like the character too, but you know, people aren't. It's not as as plugged as it once was. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like. Uh, and that's not nothing against Bray Wyatt. I love Bray Wyatt. I think he cuts great promos. I think he's a good character. Uh, but I, you know, I think that the wrestling part is 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 not where like people need it, need it to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to keep him very like, protected uh, to uh, his strengths, you know. Right. It's a right. Breed and, of fans now. Like it's, a, it's a definitely a different breed of fans in professional wrestling. Yeah, but the fans at the end of the day have always been the same they like what they like and they don't like what they don't like so like that's that's pretty cool like you know what i mean people no matter what like i may think that oh this is great and i might give it to you but the fans might not might not agree and and they're able to voice those opinions and, and, and react how they how they feel which is great yeah. um but i think like you know like one of the all-time storylines to me was like you know stone cold and vince mcmahon like that was realistic that was oh, something yeah. that that everyone couldn't relate to you know, there's no one that could not relate. Yeah, to Yeah, everyone has that one boss that they just didn't. <laughs> that like. didn't want to beat their boss yeah. up. Exactly. Yeah, everyone, you know I mean? everyone at one point in their life has that one boss that they just want to come in and sucker punch. Right, right. Or fill their and, car full of cement, or do any of these little tricks <laughs> Stone Cold did. Yeah. So I was like, we need, we need something like that again. You know, we don't yeah, promote bringing a gun to your blur, boss. We need though. something that blurs that line. That blurs yeah, that line yeah. and makes it makes it feel more like, hey, you can relate to it. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, Cena had a good run, and he was on top for a long time, and I feel like he's he's kind of like on his way out now. Yeah, so they, he's, they, he's doing the rock thing, the acting. Yeah, yeah, so they, they need that other guy, you know, and, and you know, uh, it's like Stone Cold and The Rock. Like, nobody thought, you know, Rocky Maivia was going to be The Rock, and no one thought yeah. The Ringmaster was going to be Stone Cold Stevenson, so... It's it's the same the same thing now. Who who's gonna a guy? I don't think anyone knows until it happens. Yeah, right now, like that's the thing is, is right now it's such an open thing. Right now, it could it could be anybody on the roster. I'll put money on Rick yeah. Victor. Who's Rick that? Victor? He Victor said from, Rick Victor. from the Ascension. You putting your money on Victor? On Victor, yeah. <laughs> he throwing the money at Victor. <laughs> so I have a question for you. So yeah. There's a picture of you with a sword, and I need some backstory <laughs> behind it. 
I've never heard the story. Um, I've tried to do some research. And I just couldn't find anything about it. So I wanted to ask you personally, you know, what the sword story was about, you know? <laughs> um, at the time, Blade was hot. Like, Blade mm-hmm. was uh, a new movie that came out, and I was super fan of that movie. And uh, I was doing a photo shoot, and the, the, the photographer or the studio had that, that sword just sitting there. So I was like, man, I, fuck it. Let's just shoot some shots mm-hmm. with that. You know what I mean? And <laughs> everyone that literally sees that picture is always like, yo, what's up with the sword? Like, <laughs> what's up with the sword, <laughs> What's up man? with the sword? You're trying to chop people? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought it would be cool for the photo shoot, man. And, you know, it was. I like, I love that, that mm-hmm. picture. Did you ever run with the, uh, the Blade gimmick? Because I know that, you know, wrestling, there's a lot of, you know, heroes and villains gimmick wise yeah. that are kind of, you know, shifted toward that. Like Mr. 450, if you ever know about Dragon Ball Z, he kind of does yeah. that. Um, low key right now is doing the Hitman, Agent 47. Right. So, do you ever run with the Blade? No, I never, I never did. I, mm-hmm. I was, I was more like Demolition Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when I had the block, the block. Ah, that's always fun. Yeah. That's, a, that's the fun gimmick, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, uh, what advice would you have for uh, people getting into the wrestling business? That's a good one. Um, get in for the right reasons. It's a tough business. So if you get in for just, you know, the fame and the money, um, on the independent level, there's not a lot of that. So, I mean, now it's it's different with the internet and stuff. You, you can build your name pretty pretty fast, but. Um, just get in for the right reasons. You, you gotta, you gotta love what we do because we spend a lot of time uh, in the car, you know, on the plane, and just a lot of time is spent traveling, and that's that's the hardest part, really. Um, so, you know, it's the time that we actually spend in between the ropes entertaining the fans is, for me, it's the most important. I, I, I like, I enjoy it. Just that that instant reaction, and and, and it's it's great. But there's so much time spent doing other things, you know, like traveling and just basically a lot of stuff doing the gym and, you know, eating right and stuff like that. Like there's a lot more things that are not as fun that plays a role into what we do. So I just I think getting it for the right reasons, because if you don't, then it's going to be, a, a, you know, disappointing. Very bumpy road. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about what would you say has been uh, your career highlight? You know, you look back at this and you were like, that was a really good moment of my, you know, career. Of course, you know, your career is not over. You still have, you know, many more moments to have, but. Yeah. Well, I, I got a, I got a, I got a, uh, a student now, Ty Shine. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember seeing him at, at, at a, you know, CCW show in Connecticut years ago, probably 10 years ago. And now he's training you know, with me at Test Strength Wrestling. So, like, you know, I, I inspired him to, to you know, uh, to train as a wrestler, to, to want to become a wrestler and, and you know, be successful. So, like, to me, that's the biggest thing to inspire people. And, you know, just because, you know, guys like Warrior, Michaels, Rock, you know, Stone Cold, uh, War, you know, uh, Hogan, you know, all those guys – inspired me to become a wrestler so i i, I kind of like the fact that i can do the same for other other people yeah most definitely um do you have a favorite opponent you've ever had in the ring as a competitor anyone that didn't hurt me <laughs> anyone that didn't hurt that that's the best answer that's I think yeah got. <laughs> that's the best answer we've got <laughs> anyone that didn't hurt you <laughs> You want to cut a promo on anyone that has hurt you? <laughs> Open mic right now. Open mic. I've had, I've, had, I've had a few. I had a few of those. Free fight. Yeah. Nah, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have to throw shade right now. <laughs> it's okay. There's lots of shade here. Consider this like uh, under the palm trees of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, you always have money to beat up. Try, try to keep it positive. Try to keep it positive. Yeah. Let's clear it up. No rainy situations. <laughs> so, 
So, um, what was your favorite? I'm I'm looking at a couple of the biggest shows that you've been in. Uh, what was your favorite show you ever like were a part of? Um, I mean, two CW had a good run. Um, we had a lot of, a lot of good moments there with the uh, over the edge weekends. Um, Jersey All Pro when I first started traveling was one of the first companies to give me an opportunity uh, to do something in a different area, and uh, you know those shows were fun. That's what um, I think I'm looking at the Jersey All Pro Wrestling uh, Ring of Honor Collision Course from 2004. Yeah, yeah, that was. I you think fought I, uh, Dan Math. Dan Moff, yeah, yeah. We had a we had a killer a killer match. Um, it was for JAP like months before that. That match was wasn't as good, but uh, we had a killer match months before that, and uh, you know that kind of like gave us both a, a boost in our careers. You know, to do. Oh yeah, most things. definitely good exposure, yeah. especially with the yeah. with the card that was involved with this, and this was the co-main event. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, I used to wear wrestling boots, and uh, decided to wear uh, you know switch over because the boots are so heavy and so like uncomfortable. I never found them to be comfortable, but it was it was uh, traditional, and I you know I decided to say screw tradition <laughs> and get some some wrestling uh, Asics, you know. So I wrestled out one of the first matches I wrestled was uh, with the Asics was uh, that match. And I did a, a front flip over the top rope and cracked my heel. And I, 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 <laughs> I, took, I took, took him off and threw him out that day. He's like, it's <laughs> over. It's never, over. Never looked back. But now I wear, like, boxing boots, and those are a perfect compromise. They're, they're super light. And they have, you know, uh, protection in the heel and, and everything oh, else. Because so. Cena rocks the Nikes. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know how I mean, he does it. I don't know how he does it. Well, he's not doing front flips over the top real big. Yeah. Either, so. yeah. <laughs> he does the springboard center. Not, he's not trying to throw his body yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> as long as they're comfortable to walk in, he's good. Mm-hmm. So, um... What's your favorite style opponent you've ever you, you take on? Obviously, we, we talked about there's a billion different styles, billion different flavors of opponent. Do you like the brawling type opponent? Do you like a hot to face high flyers? I like I like you know I think I have like my best matches with like flyers. Like if if, if I'm with a flyer because I think I'm a I'm a I'm a good base and I'm also a guy that can that can do stuff too. You know, and like their style as well. So like like a like a flyer, I think I have my best matches with those guys. And like also like guys who are good hybrids, like Two Cold Scorpio. I had I have a series of matches with him in Two CW, and each match was better than the one before it. And that's he, always good then. Yeah, he's another guy that's that's kind of like I mean he's the first guy I ever seen do a four fifty at you know well over like over two hundred pounds. He was like two forty, and he was yeah. So I, I he, wouldn't imagine a guy coming off the top rope that big coming at me with a four fifty. Right, right. So you know, he inspired me to, to not like you know, because a lot of big guys out there they wrestle like big guys. They don't really do much, and I never wanted to be one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. That's why I like I like the fact that there are guys like you out there that are showing that bigger guys can do this stuff. Like you don't need exactly. to be that tiny because everyone always thought you had to be that tiny that Rey Mysterio build to be able to do all that stuff. You don't really. Right. You just gotta want right. to do it. And you gotta I always go back train to Brian Cage. Yeah, Brian Cage these days, and uh, just, there's just a lot of these bigger guys. Like we were just talking about Bray Wyatt, he he throws his body around much like a, a guy who's not that. Kevin big. Owens with the uh, yeah, Kevin yeah. Owens does that cannonball. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I always, I always say, you know, uh, the ring, the ring itself is a weapon, and you yourself is a weapon. Your your body is a weapon. So, you know, you can incorporate that in your style as well. And plus, when a big guy does something crazy, like a suicide dive or a front flip over the top or a moonsault or a spring brood, you know, people are always blown away by it because they don't don't expect it. Mm-hmm. So, like, the biggest part for wrestling for me is the surprise angle. When you see stuff that people don't expect, they don't anticipate. Yeah. Like, my, my finishing move is a springboard moonsault. So I jump from the apron to the middle. That's incredible for a guy your size. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I hit it, people go crazy because they don't they don't expect it. Plus, you're standing on the apron, so they don't know what you're gonna do. They think you're gonna, you know, climb on the top rope or something. Then you jump over the top rope, land on the middle, and do a moonsault. They're like, oh shit. <laughs> so you know, it's just a moon. But when you do it like that, it makes the moonsault mean so much more because you gotta do that coordination and that athletic stuff for it. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, what is the craziest reaction 
you've had from a fan? From a fan? Or like, yeah, you ever had a fan mm-hmm. like track you down and start yelling at you? <laughs> like if I, uh, I, usually a lot, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the interactions I have with fans is usually positive. I can't think of, you know, even when I'm a bad guy, like people like when I'm doing my thing, like they hate me. But then like when they see me after the event or something, they're always like, man, like that was really cool, and you, uh, you made me like live in that moment. I mean, and like, well, that's just awesome. very that complimentary. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, fans are cool, man. And it's, it's, you know, any, any kind of hate I've had to deal with is usually from people in the industry. <laughs> oh, well, that's always good. Yeah. Make the yeah. haters be your motivators then. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Just keep, you keep doing you. <laughs> Trust me, I mean, it works for me, so I'm guessing it's going to work for you too. That, that's the only thing I can't control, man, is what I do. I can't control other people. Mm-hmm. So here's a here's a fun one for uh, you know some of the guys that you're training to show, you know how far you how far have you traveled um, for this wrestling industry? Man, I've been blessed, man. I uh, from a wrestling ring has basically taken me around the world. Like, mm-hmm. No, I would never have thought that. You know what I mean? But I've been blessed with the opportunities to wrestle in Japan, England, Ireland, Puerto Rico, Scotland. You know, uh, Canada. That's not awesome. That's like traveling for a job. It's traveling for your job. That's like it a dream. Is, I think but, everybody has that dream. It is, but wrestling, you know, still isn't and never gotten to the point for me where I felt like it was a job. I feel like it's 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 important for it not to be a job. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Yeah. I don't want to feel like I'm punching a clock. Like <clears throat> when you're I'm having fun, which is awesome. Exactly. That, that, exactly. That doesn't even feel like a job, and you're you're literally living exactly. a dream at that point. Yeah, I mean, if you enjoy something, then it, it's, it's never it's never a job. You never so, work a day in your life. If you no, and, and it's a true it's a true statement. That's great, great, great advice. I I love I love hearing that because like there like you said there when we were talking earlier, there's a lot of people who enter this business just because they want to get chicks, they want the fame. Yeah. yeah. And you gotta really love this business to be in it, especially as long as like someone like you has been in the business. You have to really right. just love it. Right. I mean, that's, that's, that's like the only way that's possible. Like you said, you've been a fan since age 10. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's you the grew only, into that's the, the business. That's the only way it's possible. You know, a lot, a lot of guys come and go. A lot of girls come and go. Uh, the only people that, you know, I feel the only people that truly remain are the people that really have, at the core, they love they love what they do. Because you're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days. And in order to survive those days, you got to love what you do. Yeah, exactly. The bad days don't seem as bad if you love it. Right. I mean, it's still bad. <laughs> yeah, it's still you, you're still gonna have yeah. days. You're still gonna yeah. have days where your body's killing you. Where you're yeah. Like, yeah. Through this. <laughs> right. But you 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 gotta go out there and continue doing it. Yeah. You get you get through it. It's you that motivation it. thing we were talking about. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have passion for what you do, then the first bad day you have, you just quit. Yeah. Right? It's over. Yeah. You just quit. <laughs> so you you know you know you know know people that enjoy what they're doing with yeah if you want it that, if you want it that bad it's gonna it's gonna be worth every second of all this hard work it takes to get to that point yeah i mean all those guys on tv's store that will tell you you know at, at the point yeah, where they, they all they all probably had plenty of bad days going up to of, that point where they're at right now in their career all those of course, days. of course but now that they're there in the wwe doing their thing then it was all worth it the bad days are a far distant memory yeah yeah for sure. So uh, do you have know. any? Do you have anything you want to uh, plug real quick? Um, just you know, Tesla Strength Wrestling, my dojo in Watertown, Connecticut. Uh, we got a bunch of good guys over there, and uh, if you learn, really learn how to do this thing right and be successful, uh, come come see us, man. We're uh, we're open, we're family, and um, we're ready to help. And just like my my uh, social media, Twitter. This is SWB, um, Instagram. SWB for real website, SWB for real.com. I'm on Facebook, so you can find me all over the place. Uh, upcoming appearances I've got um, May 19th, Top Rope Wrestling. I believe it's Brockton, Mass. Don't quote me on that, but you can check out the website. You can find the exact date and location. You we can check out your website, the SWB for real.com. Yeah, SWB for real.com. Then I got uh, May 20th, I've got 
NWWE, which is New World Wrestling Extreme. And uh, that's May 20th in one South Island. They got me going against Cortez Castro, which is a.k.a. Ricky Reyes. Yeah. And then on the 21st, I've got my own deal at Test of Strength Wrestling, uh, where we put on a live event at the end of every month. It's usually the last Sunday of the month, but this this month, there's Labor Day weekend the last Sunday of the month. So we pushed it up to the one before. So May 21st. And the main event of that will be myself going against Josh Briggs, who's a, a big guy, 6'6", 270. He's out of New England. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, trained by Brian Fury. So he, he's, he's new to the game. But, uh, you know, I think he's got a bright future. Will you be streaming that also on uh, Facebook? Yeah, yeah, we'll be streaming that live on the Test of Strength Wrestling page on Facebook. Oh, definitely going to be checking that out then. Thank yeah. you for telling me about that. Yeah, man. So we'll definitely end it off here. I want to say thank you once again for giving us the opportunity to, you know, it's really interesting, you know, getting a chance to interview a trainer. Yeah, yeah this mostly, is the first you know, strength we really have. TV we have a lot of guys who are active you know, wrestlers, yeah. but this is the first time we've got from the trainer's aspect of everything. Right, right, yeah. It's a different, different perspective, yeah. Well, obviously That's you right. have more, not not to shoot on anybody else, but obviously a trainer has more of an aspect on, hey, this is what is really being looked for as it pertains to becoming right. that professional wrestler. Right, right. You see, but, you know, um, in, in wrestling, like, you know, I was saying – in another interview that uh wrestling is, is a different breed, you know uh it's not like before when you had you, know, you had wcw you had ecw and you had wwe like right now you just have to be and then everything else is like a, and then a bunch of indie companies yeah everything's a distant second so you know tna and ring of honor like it's a far big gap between them and wwe so like wwe is mainly you know the only guy right now where you can make it you know guys are making a living doing ring of honor stuff and new japan stuff um in Oh, TNA, I don't know, but you know, guys are making a living doing other things. But I mean, they're really the only place you can make a real living is WWE. So it, it's different now. So like, and and those guys, you know, no matter how talented you are, like, they don't have to give you an opportunity. I mean, they don't need, they don't really need to do that. Like, they do that by choice. So you know, all all the guys that they give opportunities to and the girls give opportunities, that's a that's a, their choice because whether they do or they don't, they're still going to be successful. You know, because they're, they're the Coca-Cola of what we do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, uh, you just, re- wrestling is important to them, obviously, but, you know, other things are equally or if not more important. Yeah, most definitely, for sure. And thank you again for your time. Do you have anything to close it off with, Dom? Like I said, once again, thank you, Moans, for hooking us up with Sick Wagner Brown. And give a shout out to Lenny. Thank you for, you know, being another gateway in connection to Mr. Slick Wagner Brown. You know, of course, thank you once again for, you know, having, you know, taking time out of your day, you know, your Sunday. Yeah, and, man, no doubt. Uh, you know, I wish you the best of luck when it comes to training these, uh, these young bucks, these, you know, prospects of the game. Yeah. So definitely look uh, forward to hearing more from you. Of course, you're always welcome back. If you ever want to yeah. bring on a guest or anything, you know, get to rub elbows with Lenny or anything like that, or um, who was it, Mr. Josh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, anytime. All right, cool. Thank you, guys, man. And uh, I'm glad that we can link up. And let me know when this is uh, available, and I'll share it. Oh, most yeah. definitely. Thank, Thank you. you.